Hello again. If there is one thing guaranteed to infuriate left-wing people in Britain, it is to claim that the so-called asylum seekers who are flocking here by entering the country illegally are a drain on the public purse and a burden on society as a whole. The number of foreign-born people working for the NHS will always be mentioned, hinting that many of those crossing the channel on small boats might really be doctors, lawyers or engineers. How dare we say that they are causing the National Health Service to become even more stretched than it already is, or that they will deprive a British person of a council house or a child of a school place? Outrageous! All this is, of course, complete nonsense, and it's not difficult to see why. Let's think first about the NHS. In the last two years, some 75,000 people have crossed the English Channel and claimed asylum in this country. Most of these people are young men. We can be reasonably sure that few of them are highly qualified professionals for the simple reason that if they were, then they could have come to work in Britain legally. How many of them are doctors? None at all. The NHS is crying out for doctors from abroad and any doctor from any country will have no difficulty at all in obtaining a position in the health service in this country. What are the implications of this fact? Very simple, actually. And if any viewer is able to divide a number by two, then he or she will be able to work the matter out easily enough for themselves. Each GP or family doctor in this country has about 2,000 patients on his or her books. Some have more, but the more patients they have above that number of 2,000, the more difficult they find it to be to provide an efficient service. And the less likely the patients on their books will be able to see the doctor when they wish. If we assume, for the reasons which I gave, that none of those 75,000 people are doctors, then each will need to be the patient of a GP. They will register with a doctor, in other words. 75 divided by 2 comes to 37 and a half. This means that the asylum seekers and refugees who have arrived here in the last two years will need 37 or 38 GPs just to cater to their needs. Since we cannot just magic 37 doctors out of thin air, there is a shortage already in this country, then those 75,000 people will all have to be somehow squeezed onto the books of existing GPs. This must inevitably mean that those on the books of those GPs will find it harder to make an appointment to see their doctor and to get through on the telephone. This is one simple instance of what must be happening across the country, and if anybody can explain to me why it would not be happening, then I should be keen to hear about this. Two years ago, roughly one million people in Britain were on the waiting list for social housing. Adding 75,000 to that figure must inevitably mean that people will have to wait longer to get a council house or property from a housing association. This simply cannot fail to be the case. I could go on and list any number of ways in which an extra 75,000 people arriving out of the blue will have a deleterious effect upon society, but I think those two points are alone quite sufficient. Of course, it could be argued that it is right, ethically, to take in as many people who wish to enter the country, but that's another matter entirely. It can also be argued that we have a legal responsibility under international law to do so. And that touches upon another interesting point. Whether it's right or wrong, desirable or undesirable, the fact remains that those people are bound to make it harder for people in this country to get an appointment to see their doctor and harder for their children to get somewhere to live. Denying that this is so is foolish. As far as international law goes, it will usually be pointed out that Britain is, of course, a signatory to the United Nations 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees. 
under which we do indeed have certain obligations. Here's an odd thing though, looking at the countries which are not signatories to the Convention, for example India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Iraq, Syria, Saudi Arabia and so on. It does rather strike me sometimes that we are just a little bit too caring about the dispossessed and poor from elsewhere in the world, and this sometimes causes us to be neglectful of our own citizens. If Syria and Iraq refuse to sign the convention relating to refugees, how come we end up with so many refugees from those two countries? This hardly sounds fair. As usual, I give a few links on the matters about which I've been talking in the description to this video.